Coach Jonathan here. Uh, going on a little uh, adventure here to look at a 1957 Chevrolet. I don't know if this is a Bel Air or not, but anyway, we're in our International, and uh, a lot of people don't know it, but this is actually the 1957 International NASCAR edition, and uh, it's got a switch on it. You can switch to NASCAR mode, and uh, I'll switch it here, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. We're gonna uh, we're gonna ride over there in NASCAR mode so you can uh, get a feel for what it's like. I usually only use that NASCAR mode when I'm running from the, from the police. When you're on your way to look at a 57 Chevy, you gotta hurry. Alright, we're here. We'll follow him over to where it's at. Ford man, no galaxy, or fur lane, that's fur lane. I towed that the other day, Warren. Old Ford truck, Mustang. We just gotta go right down the road here, we're gonna look at it. That motor run good. I enjoy to see him out of a Corvette. Yeah, that's got the old uh, double humps on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it runs good. The guy that I bought it from, the uh, man had uh, had him start working on it. Mm -hmm. Man, he had done, when I got it, the top, he had done redid the top. Oh, yeah? But then the guy ran out of money. How much of the chrome you got? All of it. You got all of it? Yeah, I got everything. You ain't got about nothing. Is there, you got a front bumper for it? Yeah. Yeah? You drove it, what, 15 years ago, you said? Mm-hmm. Only reason I ain't started to try to start it up, I had to have uh, surgery on both shoulders, uh -huh. and I got a prosthesis, and the points are in the back. And it's hard for me to get up there and get Hard on. to get to? Yeah. Well, the door open on it. Oh, man, he, he didn't need right. the doors and everything. All right, open good. Yep, and closed it. And he put a four-speed in it. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason I said it, because it's not uh, original. All my other cars and cars are dead original. Well, it says Bel Air on the dash. So I like the post cars better than the hard tops. Yeah. Everything I've had hard top, the windows, when you go close the door, the windows are hitting each other. Turn that thing closed, yeah. Yeah, both of them closed, good. Yeah, that's not a bad looking car. Oh, what a... He didn't tell you what transmission he put in it, did he? No. Huh? <clears throat> It changed, man, I'm saying the car runs good. Oh, 
cracker. Well, they must have had this thing fixed up in the 70s or 80s. With them old crackers on it. They have some tires on it too. That's about all the tires you want to put under that thing. I might get you one day to uh, pull it in. Yep. Okay, here we are. I don't think he'll sell his Fords now. Nah, it's gonna be hard. <laughs> yeah, you know, I didn't know. Nah. You just left a note in the door when I got back yesterday, and what I seen. Right, you well, if you don't want to do it, you can just call him today and tell him you don't want to do it. Did you see the guy? No. That's his name right there, Paul somebody. Paul Pearson. Yeah. I, I knew a Paul Pearson. So, it was in the door yesterday when I got back. If you don't want to do it, just tell him. Okay, folks, appreciate you riding along with me to look at that car. Uh, I'm really up in the air as to whether I'm going to buy it or not. You know, it's not the cheapest thing out there. Uh, I've never actually owned a 57, and not, not a Chevrolet anyway. But, uh, and that, as far as I know, is a Bel Air. It's a sedan post car. But a few of the things, you know, you've seen the rust on it, uh, which is not a major issue. He says he has all the trim and chrome. Usually when someone tells you that, they're missing you know, a couple of pieces because I'm used to that. Uh, another thing too, you overheard him say, uh, had a 327 Corvette engine. Uh, you never believe anything like that. Now I'm not saying that he was lying, I'm just saying that maybe the guy he got it from wasn't being honest with him because I checked the selfish code on the engine and that's an original block. Or a 57 Chevrolet so that's either a 265 or a 283 the suffix code don't tell us that and it's got double hump heads and uh, which I think are the 462 casting uh, without the bolt holes so uh, that you know unless they've got some dome pistons in it even a 283 is not going to have enough bore with the uh, the CC chamber in that head you know to make real good power and now they could have pop-up pistons and all that. Uh, I didn't get to look at the intake, or I didn't pay that much attention to see what it was. Uh, if that was a factory aluminum GM intake, you know, it could be worth some money. Uh, old empty valve covers. Looks like it may be a, a Mallory dual-point ignition distributor. Uh, and he said he had driven it 15 years ago. Uh, it don't look like it. Uh, the, the last uh, inspection sticker ran out in 89. And... Uh, that's, uh, let me see, that's yeah, definitely more than 15 years. So uh, the bad part, worst part, 
to me, uh, of course, is the back glass. And of course, you know, you buy a car like that, you, you expect going through all the brake system, uh, you know, the fuel tank, uh, engine would probably run all right. I mean, it would probably work out. Uh, clutch is probably stuck, especially sitting that low on the ground with the tires flat. You know, uh, a clutch is <clears throat> that asbestos powder or dust or whatever, you know, you get a little moisture up in there and they like to stick. So, I mean, there's always a chance it could have to have a clutch in it. Uh, a lot of little stuff, interiors, you know, bad and a lot of it's not there. Uh, looked like there was a lot of the garnish molding and stuff like that in the box, but uh, non-original seats. There was a little console there that was non-original. Uh, don't know. <clears throat> that was probably, of course, a bench seat car. Well, I'm sure it was a bench seat car originally. And it looked like it was a three-speed on the column. And uh, so, you know, not no power steering and no air conditioning anything like that so it's not a real it wouldn't be desirable to put back as an original car uh it's pretty neat with the old the old school stuff on the engine you know the headers and all but uh you know i don't know i'm up, i'm up in the air over this thing as to what it's worth and what i could get out of it because i wouldn't be buying it to keep i'd buy it you know probably do a first start video on it uh maybe put some wheels and tires on it and just turn it over and sell it i wouldn't want to invest a lot of money into it uh, because you can uh, you can definitely get farther in a car like that than what you could get out of it. But uh, anyway, uh, like I said, I'm still up in the air on it. I don't know. Uh, you know, you can uh, look it over and, and and tell me what you think it's worth. And to a lot of people, it's probably worth scrap metal. But you know, there's some of you out there that understand and know that you know, 57 Chevrolet is a pretty desirable car. You know, even needing a lot of work, but. Uh, yeah, let me let me know what you think, and uh, I will. Uh, I'm either going to decide to buy it or not buy it, but either way, I'll give you. I'll tell you what he was wanting for it, and he is firm on the price. Uh, he won't take a dollar less than what he's asking, but it does have a good North Carolina title, which makes a big difference. And uh, anyway, appreciate everybody watching, and until uh, next time, bye.